Low profile coolers haven't gotten much love recently, but Scythe is switching that up. Howdy howdy guys, Ponchato here, and today we're checking out the Scythe Shuriken 2 low profile CPU cooler. It has a super low stack height with a 15 millimeter thick fan on top, so we'll also be comparing performance with a standard thickness 25 millimeter fan to see how much difference that 10 millimeters makes. Thanks to Scythe for sending this over for review, and let's get started. The Shuriken 2 was released just a few weeks ago in April of 2020 for 45 US dollars or about $56 if you also pick up the 25 millimeter fan. It's compatible with AM4, LGA1151, and LGA2066, and since it's a low profile cooler, it has extremely compact dimensions. It's only 58 millimeters tall, 93 millimeters wide, and 94 millimeters deep. With the thicker 25 millimeter fan, the total height is increased to 68 millimeters, which is still very short. Because of its small dimensions, RAM clearance is unlimited, and it stays well away from covering the first PCIe slot. Now Scythe doesn't give it a TDP rating, but I estimate it can handle about 110 watts based on my benchmarks. It's a very tiny cooler, so it comes in a very tiny box with all the basic details outside like the dimensions and the warranty info. Inside you'll find a box on top with all of the accessories, the mounting hardware, thermal paste, and Scythe's excellent instruction pamphlet. Scythe really does a very nice job with the illustrations and instructions for installation on their coolers. Under all that is the cooler itself already assembled with the 15 millimeter fan on top. The heatsink is a very low profile design with four heat pipes and an integrated mounting bracket. There's no need to fumble around with trying to thread a bar through a tiny slot like some other low profile coolers. It's all just ready to mount. The fan is unique in that it's only 15 millimeters thick compared to standard fans which are 25. It's a Scythe Kaze Flex 92 Slim which is an 11 blade 92 millimeter PWM controlled fan. The other fan we'll be looking at is the Scythe Kaze Flex 92, which is the standard 25 millimeters thick and has seven blades. Both fans have a minimum RPM of 300. The 25 millimeter fan tops out at 2300 RPM and the 15 millimeter fans max speed is 2500 RPM. Curiously, both fans have almost identical speeds when normalized to 40 decibels, despite being different thicknesses and having a different number of fan blades. Normalized fan noise by itself doesn't have an enormous impact on final performance, but it is interesting to note regardless. Both fans also use a fluid dynamic bearing and have rubber corner pads to help isolate vibration from the rest of the cooler. Another smart little detail is the slim fan has counterboard holes for the screws, so the heads of the screws sit flush with the top of the fan chassis, rather than sticking out above it, which helps shave off a couple extra millimeters of height. And one final nice detail is how the fan mounting location gives it a slight overhang on the VRM side, which should help with keeping the VRM heat under control, which is especially important in smaller cases that don't always have the best airflow. Scythe's latest iteration of their mounting system, which is basically the same setup used across their entire lineup, is one of the most user-friendly systems on the market today. Using the stock backplate, it starts with putting spacers over the backplate mounting holes. Next, brackets get mounted on top of those spacers on either side of the CPU socket by screwing into the backplate. Next, a bit of the included thermal paste goes on the center of the CPU, and with that on, you remove the protective sticker on the heatsink base plate and put the cooler on top of the processor itself. Once the screws are all lined up, you alternate tightening them down so you don't put any uneven strain on the motherboard, and a nice thing here is you don't even need to remove the fan. You can just slide the screwdriver between the fan blades to get to the mounting screws. Finally, you plug in the fan cable to the CPU fan header on your motherboard. Other than dealing with the camera to record it all, installation took a grand total of like three minutes. Like almost every other cooler I've tested from Scythe in the last two years or so, the installation process is very easy and super straightforward. Scythe has done a really nice job of developing their mounting system and it shows. So with it installed, let's go to the benchmarks. I tested the Shuriken 2 with my Ryzen 3 1200 and will also be comparing its performance with two of AMD's stock coolers, the tiny Wraith Stealth and the larger Wraith Spire. First up, idle temperatures. Owing to a minimum RPM double that of the Shuriken fans, the Wraith Spire and Wraith Stealth kept my Ryzen CPU much cooler at 0% fan speed. Absolute CPU temperature was around 60 degrees Celsius for the 25 millimeter fan and 65 degrees with the stock fan, but that's well within safe limits. As always, if you're paranoid about processor temperature, you could simply run the fans at 4 or 500 RPM instead to keep it cooler under idle conditions. Next, we'll look at idle noise. In the same vein as temperature, the stock and 25 millimeter fans much lower minimum RPM kept noise under control at idle. 
Both fans were effectively not audible from more than a couple inches away, whereas the Wraith coolers with their minimum RPM of 600 could still be heard under idle, at least in a very quiet room. Now here are the load temperatures, with the coolers running at their maximum RPM. Here we can see part of the performance difference between the 15 and 25 millimeter fans. The 25 millimeter fan kept it about one and a half degrees cooler than the 15 millimeter fan. The stock Shuriken 2 was about 2 degrees cooler than the taller Wraith Spire, and a pretty hefty 12 degrees cooler than the Wraith Stealth. That's no small feat, given their very similar dimensions. That's the benefit of having heat pipes instead of just a solid heatsink. Next we'll look at load noise levels. The Wraith Stealth and Wraith Spire actually came out ahead here at 42.3 and 48 decibels respectively. The 25mm fan was slightly quieter than the stock fan, probably owing to its max speed of 2300 RPM compared to the stock fan's 2500. It's important to note here though that while the Wraith Stealth is a good bit quieter at full speed, it's also quite a bit hotter. Finally, the most important graph, load temperature normalized to 40 decibels. In other words, how well each cooler performs at a given noise level. Unsurprisingly, the Shuriken 2 with a 25mm fan comes out on top at 54.6 degrees Celsius. It's followed by the Wraith Spire at about 57, the Shuriken 2 with its stock fan at 60, and the Wraith Stealth falls behind the others at about 65 degrees. So the Shuriken 2 is a capable low-profile cooler, it outperforms the taller Wraith Spire in terms of cooling capacity, and it has a very nice mounting system. Beyond that, it handily demolishes the smaller Wraith Stealth in pretty much every metric except for height. The Shuriken 2 is 58mm tall, whereas the Wraith Stealth is only 50. There isn't much I'd change on the Shuriken 2, but one thing I'd like to see in future revisions, and really from every cooler company, not just site, is delivering the thermal paste in a syringe rather than a single-use plastic pouch. That's not a huge deal, but it's easier to apply, and then you don't have to just throw away all the extra paste once you've already installed the cooler. Now to address some questions. First, regarding the 25mm fan. Does it make a notable difference in performance over the stock fan? Using the 25mm fan improves cooling both in temperature and acoustic efficiency. It dropped load temperatures by more than a degree and improved normalized temperature at 40 decibels by over 5 degrees. So yes, it does make a noticeable difference in performance. Second, is the 25mm fan worth the extra $12 or so? For such a small increase in cost, I would say as long as the added height won't cause problems in your case, the 25mm fan is definitely worth opting for to get the best possible performance out of your Shuriken 2. And I'll note here that like all low profile coolers going into low profile builds, you need to be sure the dimensions will fit in your case. The Shuriken 2 is very short and will fit in the vast majority of small cases, but some super small form factor mini ITX cases may be too small even for this cooler. So always check the cooler dimensions against what your case will allow and make sure it'll fit. So if you're after a low profile cooler with good cooling, good noise performance, and a very reasonable price, the Scythe Shuriken 2 is well worth a look. Follow the link in the description below to pick one up for yourself. Hit subscribe and click that bell icon to get notified of new videos as soon as they're up. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you wanna see more, hit subscribe, and I wanna hear from you. Have you used a low profile cooler in any of your builds? And if you did, which one? I'm curious to see what everyone's used, so let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I hope I helped, and I'll see you in the next video. I mean, look at how cute this thing is. It's so small. I love mini ITX stuff. Hopefully we'll start seeing more small form factor components and cases in the future, because I feel like right now we have a very limited selection. Only time will tell.